like it's been a year since I've got to see most of you. We're in a brand new year. Praise God. That's right. Brand new year. God is so good. Man, we've got a fresh start. Man, look at your neighbor. Give him a thumbs up. Say, Amen. Time to start it all over again. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And I want to read a verse of scripture to you as we get started this morning. Let's go to the Word of God and we're going to pray. We have many, many things to pray about. A lot, of, a lot of sickness, a lot of things going on in the area and even live in our church family. But we know God is able. And we're believing for great things for God to, to deliver and to heal. In Psalm 67... Reading this out of the New King James Version. It says, God be merciful to us and bless us. And cause his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on earth. Your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples, amen, plural peoples. Amen, let the peoples praise you. Oh God, let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteous and govern the nations on earth. Again, it says, let the peoples praise you, oh God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear Him. Praise God. How many would just say, you ready for God to bless you today? Amen. And He's worthy of our praise, and we need to pray. Let the people praise and worship and magnify the Lord God, for He's great, and He is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got so many needs, so many things to pray about. If you have only a need that God can meet, would you just lift your hand? Amen. Just saying, I believe in God. I believe that God is able. Praise God. We want to pray for Jeanette this morning. A man that texted me before I came to church today. Uh, Jeanette needs prayer. Uh, their family. Uh, a lot of sickness. Lane is sick. Their grandbaby, just uh, Quentin's youngest son, has COVID and is needing a touch from God. So she just asked that we would just pray for them, and especially this morning. Praise God. I'd like the whole church to, to remember the little baby, Avery Renee. She's having heart surgery in the morning at Fanfield. So if I just be a special prayer for this baby, she's just yes. like eight months old. Yes. Just please remember to keep the clay family, Rebecca, Kevin, that whole family in prayer we have in the service today. And receive friends at one, I think it starts at one o'clock today until three. And then we'll be having a service, I think, at Edgefield. Is that correct? Edgefield Center. 3.30? 3 3.30 is the service. Okay. I'm sure the details are on Facebook or something. But just remember, especially pray for pray for comfort. Pray for God to just moments like those only God can, right? Only God can, but God is able to do that. Praise. Amen. Continue to remember Jim, Franklin, Sister I, uh, Irene. God will touch her. Good to see Gail this morning back with us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. God's a healer, isn't he? Sister, and Sister Sturgeon, Bill Yule, and his family. We want to continue to remember them in prayer. God will just continue to strengthen and touch them. 
Praise the Lord, Rachel is back with us this morning. And good to see her today. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let's just go before the Lord in prayer. Let's lift him up today. Father God, we come before your great and awesome name. Praise God. We worship you and we magnify you and we praise you today. And God, I just pray, God, right now for healing to sweep through. God, not only this church, but healing to sweep through the whole Tri-Cities area. Oh, we curse this virus and these things that are going on. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We speak for healing and deliverance and hope, God, right now in the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. We give you praise today. We give you glory. God, we just thank you in advance, God, as you're going to continue, God, to heal. You're going to continue, God, to deliver. You're going to continue, God, to strengthen. God, because, God, you are faithful. You are a faithful God. And we praise you and we magnify your wonderful name today. God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Leslie is going to start us off singing this morning. I asked her if she would do that. We, all of our musicians are out. We want to be singing his, uh, canned music today. But just worship God. Amen. Just worship Him. You're not a spectator today. Amen. Say, I'm not a spectator. I'm a participator. Amen. I'm going to participate. Amen. In praising and worshiping God today. Worship Him. Praise Him today.
It's been good. Amen. Amen. Has he been good to you? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Like I tell you from time to time, go ahead and just take a good deep breath. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's good right there. That's the goodness of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's people all over the planet right now that love to be able to do that. Man, they can't take a good deep breath. And that feels so good to be able to breathe. Your heart's beat. You're alive. You're able to worship and magnify and praise God. And I'm telling you, we serve a God that is so good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Let's just continue worshiping today. How many is believing for a miracle today? Let's worship with the praise name. We're going to believe for a miracle. Amen. God is a God of miracles.
prayed about and uh, think that we should do. But uh, uh, found out here lately, Brother Charles, his, uh, his house that he lives in, his, uh, the roof's leaking. He's having, when it rains, he's having to put out pots in the middle of the floor to catch the rainwater. And uh, he really needs some help uh, to get that roof fixed. And the best way to fix it is just to replace it. The best way to fix it because it's just uh, to that point. Uh, I asked Brother Doc, he knows about stuff like that. And he went over and looked at it and, and shared with me what he thought uh, would take to fix it. And uh, he said we ought to just get it replaced. And uh, you know, the Bible tells us to do good especially to those of the household of faith. And uh, Brother Charles Perry has actually attended this church before I ever came. So I've been here 37 years almost, so he's probably been a part of this church for close to 40 years. He was a long-distance truck driver all through his working days, and uh, he's been a great uh, person to get to know him. He's just wonderful person, a giving person, uh, one of the best tomato growers you'd ever want to eat a tomato from. And I know he's probably given you some if he hasn't. Uh, of course, last year was his last year of putting out a garden because of his health and health reasons. But uh, like I say, he's been here ever since I came. He's uh, been such a help to us when we was over in the other building. His dad and his brother, they were contractors, they were framers, they built buildings, and Charles had done some of that before he went into the public workplace to drive a truck, but uh, we didn't have anything over in that other building but just a concrete floor and a roof and blocks, cinder lock building with a roof and just a concrete floor. His dad and brother and Charles and the men who volunteer began to uh, uh, build those walls over there. And so, anyway, uh, there's nothing uh, more to say other than uh, we have a brother in need. The Bible says if you see your brother in need and don't do something about it, you know how does the love of God dwell in you? So I want to start a fundraiser today. I want what offering comes in today of this day of start. But uh, I'm going to need, we're going to need to finish this. Probably at least 40 people that could give $100. You know, I, I no way I can pay for it. No way you can pay for it. But us together, you know, us together, working together, we can get it done. And I just, you know, we've got a lot of rains coming, hard rains and the predicting them. And of course, always in the spring, we get a lot of rain. So I'd like to uh, get this done, you know, I'd like to get the money saved no later than Valentine's Day. So that's just, what, just one month away. So, uh, so it's expedient to do something about it. So I want you to pray, those of you that watch us on the internet, I want you to pray about uh, doing something. If you can give a hundred dollars on it, just plan on doing it. If you can give more, then God knows that. And if you can't get that, but you can give 10, 20, 30, 40, whatever you can give toward it. I'd like for you to, to begin each week. You know, we're just gonna mention it each week. Uh, you know, we're not gonna take an offer that we're just gonna mention it. You can uh, designate it, you know, just have a building fund, you know, a fundraiser to put a roof on Brother Charles. He's got a, you know, it's, uh, and I had, to, I had to persuade him to let me tell it to him. You know, he didn't want, you know, when I first began to talk to him about it, he said, no, I don't want you to do that, don't want you to do that. But I began to talk to him and actually had to persuade him uh, to give me permission to ask you guys to help, okay?
okay? How many is going to pray that? Praise God. And you're going by the help of God. I know you, you're going to do the right thing. So today what the offering comes in is it's going to be a little start for it, okay? We'll let the offering go toward that and that will give us a starting point. And then uh, you'll just have to, you know, next week the offering will go toward it. But maybe you bring an extra offering, you'll bring something, you know, to give toward uh, the project, okay? All right. Does that sound good? Yes. Amen. You know God, uh, He's a blessing, isn't He? Yes, he is. Amen. About almost eight years ago now, my roof started leaking. And I said, well, I was in better shape than I am now. I'm going to get up here and tear the back half of it off. And I get that tore off, maybe I can you know, just put the shingles there myself. And then I'll tear the front off and do it. Well, I got it tore off and I got some of the black paper down. And uh, my son-in-law and my son, they got to feel sorry for me. They called in the cavalry, amen. They called in the cavalry. I've got pictures of it. And there's several of them in and sitting right here today. They came out there and, and uh, we had six or seven men showed up and uh, they put all the shingles on the back. We tore the front off and they put all the shingles on the front in one day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And was I ever happy? Yeah. Man, shout that. Yeah. So, uh, you ever had a roof leak? <laughs> it's a, oh, it's bad. Yeah. It's so disheartening something like that happens, but, but I know God's going to bless us in this, and it'll happen, and you'll help make it happen, okay? Father, we love you today, and thank you, Father, for giving the spirit of the Tri-City Church of God. We thank you for your love one to another. We're brothers and sisters here. We're family, and God, we want to help each other when we can, do what we can, especially to those that are the household of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So they're going to sing another song. You bring your offering today, and your tithes and offering, and God will bless you for it, okay?
Wasn't that a blessing? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, there is something about that name. What's his name? Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. So good to see you today. So happy you're here. You know that uh, my son, because of sickness, so many of the family was sick and different, different ones. We still have several of our members that are, you know, having uh, sickness. Uh, Sister Carrie, Brother David, I think they're both uh, under the weather. Continue to pray for them. Uh, our praise for you, Brother Hugh and his family uh, are recovering. We have several, Betty and Aunt Penny, and their, some of their kids and children. Uh, so much to pray about. Man, but uh, we're going to get through it, right? Hey, man, God is one. We're going to have a comeback, right? Praise God. We'll have to have a house full next Sunday. Just, hey, amen, shout and glorify God. Seeing great things happen. And you know that can happen today. Yes, it can. The Bible says, what, two or three? Well, look around. More than that, right? Two or three gathered together there. What happens? Jesus is in the midst. Hallelujah. Amen. Take your hand do like that. You know you're waving your hand to the presence of God. He said he's in the midst. He is. He's right here by the Holy Spirit that is. Let me say it's uh, good today to welcome first time guests with us. Uh, we've got a member of the Henson family here. Amen. Dustin. Right? Praise God. We appreciate you being here today. First time here. And we're glad that he's here. Amen. Amen. He, he may have that same voice. He may have him up here singing for a while. He's been to them Ronnie Henson and all that much, right? Praise God. Glory to God. Get right into the Word of God today. I'm going to read out the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27. I'm going to read uh, verse 18. Uh, maybe through 20. Acts 27, verse 18. And when, and we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest. And we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest. The next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. All hope was gone. They were in a storm, a tempest. A man had seen neither sun nor stars. For many days. And the Bible says, they, amen, hope that they should be saved was taken away. Will you pray? God will help your pastor today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus today, God, we know we're fighting a time in our lives, we're fighting a time in the nation that hope. And hope, amen, of getting things uh, back to normal or back to the way they should be. Oh, God, amen, having health, all its strength and power. God, Lord, don't let us lose hope. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I want to use for a thought today. This is uh, our, our first opportunity. I wasn't able to be with you last weekend. Jason came and uh, uh, he ministered simply uh, only through the internet and did a great, wonderful job preaching as usual. But I want to use this to be my first sermon of 2022. And I wanted to use for a thought, what will we do? In 2022. What will we do? You know, depends on how you say that. 
What will we do? You know, you can have that kind of attitude. Well, what will we do? Or we can say, what will we do in 2022? You know, God is looking for us, amen, to be overcomers. Amen, to be salt and light. Thank God. You know, if it wasn't for the Christians, if it wasn't for the saved of this world, do you know that this world would go completely sour and corrupt if it wasn't, amen, for the children of God? We're salt and we're light. Hallelujah. Salt and light has a has the ability to, uh, amen, slow down the sickness. Amen. My God's greater, yeah. isn't he? He's greater than any sickness. He's greater than any snow. We're reading about, amen, ship people uh, on the ship, sailors that knew what they were doing. They're very, uh, amen, not knowledgeable about sailing the ship. But oh, they've been through such a storm like they've never been through before. And maybe we say once in a while, we've never seen it like this. Seemed like we we're coming out of it. Seemed like things are getting better. And all of a sudden, uh, oh, we're right back in the, oh, the spin side. Glory to God. And I'll tell you what, God's right in there with us. Just like the three Hebrew children, when they were in the fire, there was a fourth man in there with them. He was already in the fire when they threw him in there. And God is right here with us. What we're going through, what this church is going through, what this nation is going through, if we, praise God, will do what Paul the Apostle did, and what the early church did, what any Christian will do, amen, in times of trouble. I want to talk to you about what will we do. And what will we do determines on what will I do. See, what we do boils all down to what do I do? What will I do in 2022? If you read on a little bit in that chapter, you hear a man of God, a man of God by the name of Paul the Apostle. The Bible says he is chosen of God. He was a chosen vessel. At one time, he was against the church. He, was, he thought the church was preaching uh, false doctrine. He thought the, the preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ was Antichrist. And he was going about. He was a Jew, a Pharisee of Pharisees, uh, educated at the feet of Galileo. Oh, he was high and mighty in that uh, Jewish uh, religion, in that Pharisaical uh, realm. But, but Oh, when he met Jesus. Praise God. See, he was arresting people. Now, put in jail. Not only that, but he was consenting to the death, even of people that believed in the death and burial and resurrection. But the Bible says he, he had a great light shine on him one day on his way to Damascus. Amen. That wasn't Virginia, either. But it was always there. Damascus was Syria. He was going to put some in chains because they were serving God. But on the way, Jesus said, I got to turn him around. And you know the story. He saw a great light and he fell to the ground and he actually went blind for several days. And he heard a voice saying, Saul, his name was Saul at that time. It was later changed to Paul. He said, Saul, why are you kicking against me? Why are you fighting against He said, who is it, Lord? Amen. He said, it's Jesus. The resurrection. Amen. It's the gospel. It is the truth. But anyway, here, here he is on board that ship. Several years later, he's on the ship. He's on his way to Rome. God had told him, amen, as he was preaching, as he was establishing churches, as he was the church was growing. People were getting saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And God had told him, you're going to do, you're going to go as far as you're going to preach, amen, to Caesar. 
You're going to Rome, the most powerful nation of the world in that day, the most powerful army of that of the whole world in that day. And he said, you're going to stand before Caesar and you're going to share this gospel. And he was on that ship. And Paul, though he was probably, at one time he may have been as worried as the, as the sailors and the other people that were there. The Bible tells us there were 276 souls aboard that ship. But after all these things happened, he said, but after a long abstinence, without anything to eat, without anything to drink, for a long day, a long time, amen, the Bible says that Paul had a vision. Paul had a message. Praise God. Paul had an angel came to him. He said, uh, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And he said to me, Paul, fear not. Fear not because you're going to Rome. You're going to Caesar. Thank God. And he said, now I exhort you. I, I plead to you. I preach to you. Those of you that are on this ship and you're thinking you lost all hope, listen. Praise God. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Because I have seen an angel and heard the message of God. Amen. Paul said, I believe God. I believe God. That's the first thing I want to put into your mind. What are we going to do? We're going to believe God. Amen. We're going to believe God. Your pastor, I didn't see an angel visit with me last night. I didn't have a messenger of an angel, but I've got a messenger right here. Amen. The 66 books of the Word of God. That's my messenger. I don't have to see an angel. I don't have to have an angel. But Paul needed that messenger, but I've got a messenger, and it's called the Word of God. Let's believe God. Let's take God and His Word. Amen. That's what we're going to do. That's what the Tri-Cities Church is going to do. We're going to take God at His Word. Amen. I found in the Word of God in Acts 10 chapter, the Apostle Peter was summoning to the house of Cornelius. And then he had an angel too. An angel told him, go, down in nothing, go over. This was the first time that he had was able to go Oh, the first time he was ever summoned to go to the Gentile people and preach the gospel. He didn't want to go, really. He thought you had to be a Jew. You had to be part of the Jewish nation to be saved. That's what he thought. This is only happened to the Jewish nation. But no, God said, go have nothing. And when he got there, the short of the thought here is in Acts 10 and 34, Peter said, I found out at the house of Cornelius that God is no respecter of people. But in every nation, he that feareth God and worketh righteousness is accepted with God. Hallelujah. That's good to know, isn't it? You don't have to be a Pharisee. You don't have to be a Jew. You don't have to know 10,000 Bible verses. Hallelujah. It's good to know all you can know. I'm not saying that. But listen. Amen. God says we can take Him and His Word. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, He said, In me you might have peace. When you feel like all hope's gone, look to Jesus. In me, you'll have peace. In the world, you'll have trouble. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise God. Back in the Old Testament, in the man by the name of Gideon, in his day, see, Jesus said, Peace, you'll have peace. Gideon, in his day, in the book of Judges, 
Amen. The Bible says that he built an altar and an angel appeared to him and an offering that he offered unto God, amen, was consumed by fire right out of the rock and went up into the heavens. And he built an altar there and he called that altar Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. You feel like maybe no hope, all hope may be gone. Amen. Let's just believe God. Let's take him at his word. He is God of peace. Yes. Jehovah Shalom. No peace like the peace of God. No real peace until you find peace with God. You see the same devil that was after the nation of Israel in Gideon's day, the same devil is after this generation today. That nation, that uh, Midianite nation that were coming against the children of God, they were idol worshippers, or worshippers of an idol God by the name of Baal. And I, I would be embarrassed to tell you the things that went on in the worship to Baal. Just get on your computer, uh, find the books of her, and check out uh, what it meant to be a worshiper of Baal, even to the point of uh, offering up children to God as a sacrifice. All kind of ungodly, uh, sinful, fleshly uh, things that took place. He was a God of fertility. You can, you can look it up. I, I'm not going to explain it all to you, but it's very, very ungodly and very unlikely. We, we today, we're fighting the same devil. The same devil. But you know, Gideon found the deliverer. Yeah. And I'm here today to tell you we've got a greater one than Gideon. A greater than did it is here in 2022 and his name's Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's take him at his word. And number two, let's be the church that Christ has paid for. Amen. You know Acts 10 and 28 says, the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. The church of God. That means everything same individual. They may say Baptist. They may be a man Catholic. They may be others Christian church. But anybody that is saved, that's part of God's church. Amen. You know I tell people here, we don't think we're it, but we're part of it. But I tell you that the Word of God does say the church of God which He purchased with His own blood. Let's be the church that He paid for. Let's be the church that He paid for. Matthew 16 and 18, the church that He paid for, He said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall never, amen, prevail against me. Yeah, it'll come against me. Hell will come against us, but it will not prevail. For greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. Praise God. 1 Corinthians 6 and Amen. Uh, verse 19 and 20 says, What? Don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Let's be a man, men of God and women of God. Amen. What am I going to do in 2022? Amen. Let's agree to walk together. Let's agree to walk together. Praise God. Take God in His Word. Let's be the church that He's paid for to us today. He paid it with His blood. Amen. You know the Word of God says in the book of Corinthians, it said, Amen, the love of God constrains me. You know, you, you can make a decision. You can make decisions do wrong. You can make decisions to allow this or that 
that you know may not be approved by God, you may make a decision to try that or get involved in that. But I want to tell you, if you fall in love with Jesus, the things of the world lose all of their desire, all of their control that they may have on you. The love of God will constrain you to be a man of God and a woman of God. Let's agree to walk together. Psalms 133 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in you. Amen. This thing that we're going to do for Brother Charles, amen, we're getting together on how good, how pleasant it is for things like that to happen. Amen. There's a word that we don't use often. There's a word I think I told you about it one time before in a message, but a word called synergy. Synergy. It means the inaction, the interaction, interaction of two or more to produce a combined effect greater than the separate effects. That means, that means I've got power, I, I've got power, Amen. But if I join with you, your power, the sum of our power is greater than this my power. Power of God, I'm talking about. The power of agreement. Amen. The more, better. The better understanding of it means working together. It means partnership. It means combined effort, teamwork. Praise God. Brother Richard, bless you. Those of you that go down to the uh, feeding ministry, your teamwork, your, your gathering together makes it stronger, makes it better. Praise God. We're, we're going to do that more and more. Our church is going to grow more and more. We're going to launch out 2022. What are we going to do? Praise God. We're going to believe God. We're going to take God in His Word. We're going to agree together. Man, we're going to win this community. We're going to win lost people of God. We're going to learn to witness better. To be a better witness. Amen. To have more opportunity. Praise God. Go out to the lost. He said go out to highways and hedges and compel them to come in. You know, we can't just put up the sign and sit here and say, Come and get what we got. We got to take it to them. Amen. We got to go out. We got to go out in the world. Agree together. Work together. The Bible in the book of Genesis, God testifies of the strength. God tells us how strong a unity can be. In the book of Genesis 11 chapter, uh, this was after the flood. In the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, ninth chapter, uh, the mandate that God had given the survivors of the flood, he said, go and replenish the earth. Replenish the earth. Multiply and replenish the earth. But they they had grown to a certain extent and they found themselves in the valley called Shinar. And there they said, let us build us a Town. Let us build us a temple. Let us build us a tower that will reach unto the heavens. God said, Behold, the people are one with one language. They're together. They're working on the same thing. We've got the same mind. Amen. To work together. And it says nothing. Nothing will be restrained from them which they imagine. Anything they've got a vision to do, God said, they'll do it. So God witnessed to the power of unity, the power of one voice. It wasn't God's will that they build a tower. It wasn't God's will that they build a temple. It was God's, God's mandate that they replenish the earth, multiply, go out into the earth. Praise God. You see, the power of agreement, the power of agreement is still available to us. We 
find it in Matthew 18 19. If two of you, if two of you would pray. How did Jesus send his disciples out two by two? Send them out two by two and go out in and witness them. They gave them power over the enemy. They came back rejoicing. He said, What? Even the devil was said to us out there, Jesus. He said, Don't be rejoicing because of that, but rejoice because of your name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. How many feel like their name's down there? Woo! Glory to God in the Book of Life. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take him in his word. We're going to be the church that he paid the price that he paid for. And we're going to work together. We're going to have synergy. We're going to have partnership. Combined effort, teamwork. Praise God. You see, we're under another mandate. You and I are. We find it in Matthew 28 and 19. Matthew 28 and 19. Let's, let, let's, let me turn there and we'll read that so we won't mess it up. Verse 18 ends. The red letter says, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. That's Jesus talking. All power. How much power? All, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things and whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. Even to the end of the world. That's our mandate. Go ye out into the world. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Timothy said, Timothy or Paul wrote to Timothy, Timothy 1 Timothy 1 15. He says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all adaptation. Adaptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He said, whom I'm chief. Praise God. It's faithful saving of all acceptance. Amen. Jesus Christ, He came to seek and save. We find that scripture in Luke 19 and 10. He came to seek and save the lost. Praise God. Let's take Him at His word. Let's be the church and pay for it. Let's get it together. Amen. 2022. What are we going to do? <laughs> Amen. We're going to be victorious in God and in God's work. Our jail ministry. Amen. We're going to get back into the jail ministry. We're going to get back into the nursing home ministry. We're going to get back into the soul winning ministry. How many would like to see some souls saved? And bring them in and disciple them. They grow strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. What am I going to do? See, that, that, that's where it depends. We've got to individual make our mind up. We're going to take God and His Word. Man, we're going to be Christians. The Word of God says we can be. And we're going to be agreeable. We're going to work together. Amen. We're going to spread this good news that Jesus Christ came to seek and save the lost. Amen. How many remember when you were lost, somebody told you about Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. Wasn't it great? Amen. Would you stand with us today? Oh, I hope. I hope today you've been inspired that you that you <laughs> you may have been thinking about the way one way after another way on sickness and trouble and this and that but now you lifted your head up above amen you look at the arm on the horizon thank God and you see hey there's hope be in good cheer did good cheer. Amen. God is still in control. He's still in control. Father, we love you today. We love every, every person here today. God, if there should be one today that has not yet accepted that gift, 
God, let this be the day that they would come and say, I, I need Jesus in my life. I, I need to say, Lord, help me. Save me. And you know what? God will do it. While I sing this song, if you feel led to come, please come. We'll pray with you. God will bless you. You'll leave a brand new man, a brand new woman. In Jesus' name.
God. Thank you today for being here. We are, we do have a great side service this afternoon at 4 over to Edgefield Methodist Church Cemetery. And they are receiving friends at Morris Baker from 1 to 3. I think so, yes. And uh, this Brother Tony, our drummer, Gloria, his wife, their daughter. Uh, she had a stillborn son this past week. And, uh, and keep them in your prayers, will you? Okay, keep them in your prayers. Brother Max. Brother Max. Yeah, Right, Brother Mac, our guitar player back here, my answer, and stepdad passed away. Got so many. Please take a prayer, prayer list home with you today. Pray about it. We, we will not have Sunday night service tonight due to, due to break signs. You know, it'll be 5 o'clock or so before that's over with. And, and we'll give us another service or two to get healed up. We'll be back here Wednesday. Come back Wednesday and be with us. We'll be here. Mike will be probably teaching on Psalms 91. Doing a great job. And uh, look to you to have you back next week. Okay? Pray for one another. Love one another. Tell people about Jesus everywhere you go. Okay? You are dismissed today. Love you.